Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Acuff, Emeritus Professor of Medicine here at Johns Hopkins Hospital. I'm sitting in what we call the Osler Textbook Room, which is on the second floor of the Billings Administration Building uh, under the dome. Osler was the premier physician of his generation, um, not only in America, but probably uh, internationally as well. I think he was generally acknowledged to be the uh, finest physician as terms of a clinician, but also as an educator. Osler's uh, contributions to teaching are many. Um, what he was most proud of was the fact that he brought medical students into the wards. Uh, he excelled in bedside teaching, but also his writings. The hospital opened in 1889, but the medical school not until 1893. So by and large, Osler's clinical duties were minimal. They were taken over primarily by his resident physicians. So he was encouraged to write a textbook of medicine, something which was lacking at that time. And from 1891 to the spring of 1892, he was in this room writing his famous textbook called The Principles and Practice of Medicine. Uh, and that very quickly became the definitive textbook of medicine not only in this country, but in Europe and in Canada as well. And we think Osler chose this particular room because the hospital library, the stacks, are directly across the hall. So he had uh, easy access to reference books, which were necessary uh, as he wrote his own textbook. There is a, a famous photograph of Osler at his desk surrounded by books. Uh, writing his textbook and the inscription below, which uh, we think was written by Dr. Welch, but don't know for certain, says Parturit Osler Nasator Liber. Osler in labor, a book is born. <laughs> Dr. Osler came to Johns Hopkins from the University of Pennsylvania, and during his time there, he became friends with a couple, uh, Dr. Samuel Gross and his wife, Grace Revere Gross. And Dr. Gross was about 18 years older than his wife. And when he passed away, Osler uh, began visiting her more often and eventually proposed marriage. But he was writing his textbook at that time. And so she graciously refused his uh, proposal until he had finished the book. So when the first copy came off the press, he took it up to Philadelphia, tossed it in her lap, and said, here's the book, now take the man. It's important to uh, emphasize that in the context of American medical education uh, of the late 19th century, most medical schools were proprietary schools, relatively few even associated with hospitals, and students would pay a fee, attend lectures, uh, sitting on benches in a big amphitheater and listen to the professor lecture and in terms of clinical exposure they would watch operations, watch deliveries, but had no real patient contact and certainly no responsibility for patients. So the system that Osler introduced here at Hopkins uh, really represented a sea change in medical education. He asked uh, somewhat tongue-in-cheek that his epitaph read he brought students into the wards. And by that he meant patient contact. That is, medical students would actually take histories from and examine patients uh, on their own and then make rounds with Osler and they would present cases to him. And at the next level of residency, the same thing. Um, the residents were given great responsibility for the care of the patients. That in part is why Osler had so much free time to write his textbook and, and uh, give speeches elsewhere. But it really was a, a major change in medical education, which over the course of the next two decades or so became the norm uh, throughout American medical schools. But Hopkins and Osler were definitely the leaders in that. In any case, in this display case, we have a few, a couple actually, items that were Osler's. He didn't leave much in Baltimore because he and his wife and son moved uh, lock, stock, and barrel to Oxford. But among these uh, items that we do have is this a stethoscope, 
which we think is probably the same one as in, in this photograph that uh, hangs from his vest pocket. And also, uh, you may have heard the story of the Latchkeers. Osler and his wife lived at number one West Franklin Street, and next door at number three were three young physicians, Harvey Cushing, Thomas Futcher, Henry Barton Jacobs, and each of them was given a latchkey uh, to Osler's home and free reign as far as using his library, which was, of course, very extensive. And this particular key was given to us by Thomas Futcher's son, Palmer Futcher, who incidentally was uh, Osler's godson. <coughs> 